Uh, what are some of the biggest challenges faced by student athletes in Kenya uh, in regards to balancing academics and sports? Anyone can just pick it up. So I'm a student, so I mean, <laughs> I'm more familiar with that. So, <laughs> so um, I, I realize like people have different like um, priorities, you know. So uh, some people really value the sport more than the academics. But um, I understand like it's a student athlete, but it's not like the other way around, like an athlete student. So you must be a student first to be even called a student athlete. So people, a lot of people just think like talent can really take you places, but like without academics, you know, I feel like I've seen people, we went to camps and that, and like they are way more talented than me, you know, but like the thing really, that really set them back is just the academics part of it. They really don't take care of the academics and like, Coaches like Fango are like, so even if you get like an opportunity to go to the States, like it's just no talent, like it's, it's both. Like you have to balance both academics and, uh, and basketball. So uh, one of the challenges is just like at times, for me, my major is uh, cellular and molecular biology. It's like a pre-medicine pre uh, pre uh, track, so it's taxing. So it's, you know, a lot of work. You have to give as much as you give like on basketball to, uh, to school as well. So. For me, uh, my main challenge right now is like just a lot of work, you know, uh, like it's a full time sport uh, job. You wake up in the morning, you do like, for example, like me, uh, you have to go to wait around like six or six to seven, six thirty to seven thirty. Then after that, you have like 15 minutes to go to the locker room. You got a shower. Then after that, I have like a lab, for example, like on Tuesday, I have a lab at eight. So I have to, it's a quick like turn. So I have to run there, you know, I have to just to, then after the lab, it's like a three hour lab. Then after that, I have like two back to back classes. So I really even don't even get time to eat good lunch. Then after that, you got straight practice at three and practice like, tell me it's practice. Like I tell you like it's practice. It's not like he, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like he be up AV, like, you know, it, it's like drill after drill after drill, conditioning, all that. It's all mixed in one, in one session. So. At times, like, we really fail to recognize the importance of, like, academics. So we really give basketball more time and commitment. And we even forget about our classes. Then it gets to that point of the semester when you really have to get grades right. Then, you know, you are, like, in a rush. Like, I have to get an A in this class. I have to get, like, a 70 in these exams for me even to pass the course, you know. Like, because you 40. Mm -hmm. You have to like start doing your calculations. Like, I have to get this in order to pass the class. At this point, you're not even aiming to get like an A or a B. You just so you want to like you don't want to have like a retake. So, you know, I'll be part of that. So I, I know how it works. Like I said, you know, too comfortable in it. My Zenik Peter, do you see? I'm like the passing point. That you're classic. I'm cool with it. So now, so at times we really like just prioritize like sports more to not classes and all that like then we all in a rush but in bad situations you know you you have like situation in say i see graduate in time because like they didn't finish some units or they failed some units so that's like if you're on a scholarship on a departure, you have to go dig in your pockets again and like pay for the extra units and that and with that if you just you know jipe time create time for everything you can avoid all that and just finish like your course ume peter vizuri which opens the doors for like job opportunities, isn't it? Do you have to make that choice? Back you have to to the back at some point in life, so you have to fall back on something. So if you went to school for this particular, you know, career, you can like have that to fall back to. But to fail exam, you look at my back like more of like your your the niyote you make basketball. Then like who can get the papers? They're not qualities, no. So you use basketball to pay for school yeah but like that school part of it is not really helping as much as you could have done if you you know if you invested more in the in class as much as you invest on basketball uh anyone from panelists to add on to that briefly oh okay maybe just to add on what uh cage has talked about right of course it goes without saying um people say education is not everything but i always add one thing it's something so you don't have to be an A or a B student. Your past is just enough to get you get by. 
The reason as to why I say education is something is because just imagine if in any case you didn't have your degree, nobody would be willing to listen to you. So what I tell young students is that the degree is more of a stepping stone in the sense that if you have a degree, somebody has a minute to listen to what you're saying. But just do a calculation and try and imagine if in any case you are super talented, you have all that it takes to be among the best athletes in the country, but you haven't gone to school. Even in as much as somebody's speaking to you, somebody would still have that ringing voice in the back of their head. They're like, ah, but this person, uh, you didn't go to school, but okay, so uh, yeah. So it gives you some sense of validation and it gives you that opportunity to just have a foot in the door. So you don't necessarily have to be an A student. That's what I always tell people or a B student, but just try and pass your units. Have the degree with you because it will help you get in certain places that you could have not necessarily gone into without a degree. What you say? Education is long term. The only time you stop learning is when you die. And you don't know if you die, if you stop learning. Yeah. So it's long term. So it will not stop today, not tomorrow. Whether you're going to play basketball, you still have to learn plays. That is still learning. Still have to develop your IQ. Yeah. Now most of the times you are on TikTok, IG, Instagram. If you use half of that time to finish your assignment, you're a better athlete. Yeah. And he said, first you're a student before you're an what? An athlete. Okay. So make sure. But education is long term. Every single day of your life. Even you, when you walk outside here, there are billboards, there are what? You're going to read them. You're going to read them. Yeah, you're going to read them. That is education. That is knowledge. Because next time you'll be asked, that is education. Yeah, that is education. So it's long term. So it never stops. So try to keep yourself reading every time, every time. Read. Even if it's a paragraph of, of something, it may be meaningful or not, but read. It sets you apart from the rest. Yeah, yeah. yeah just yeah. to add on that, actually, mm -hmm. like, who calls uh, how to even get a scholarship in college? It's so hard, in it. They they just go like for the little details. Like, Muko, all, all of you, Muko six nine, athletic, all that. You can do the same things. But what really can give you an opportunity if you have better grades than the other guys? To Uko, like, no coach will want to get like a player where like they have to spend a, and invest a lot of time. Kufata nice, you learn a class, you learn a EV, you pass class, so many. So like that little like your your academics can really be like in as in as I could set apart from the rest of the guys. Some guys will be even more talented than you, but the coaches will look at you like you know like talent is more of like you nurture it. Sindio, you have some time like this guy might not be like as talented, but he's smart. That means like he listens, he follows instructions. So they're gonna be like you know what, we can like train you. So you can be like the other guys. But the fact like we don't have to follow you around to go to classes, to handle your business, to communicate to your professors, like come to travel. For example, you're traveling like during a weekday, you won't be you won't be able to attend like a class. So if you are not responsible enough, I would call like outer email professors, no. Then all those like it's in a pile up by the end of the semester, when they call you fisi, when they call you like they try to fix things for you, and that thing is like a headache. I, tr I, tr I trust you when I, I trust me when I say that. Do you like, while you're stress, then yeah, want to stay eligible, like just to play. But like other people, they they can play, yeah. At times, like some people, like they are the best players in the team, but their grades won't even allow them even to touch the court. So at times, like just education itself will put you in a spot, like you prosper. More than Kaunga value education. Either. Yeah, and uh, I would wrap that question uh, by saying uh, what a good friend of mine says, Hilda Indasi. She says education is like insurance. <laughs> because just as Zegi said, today you read it, but tomorrow you, you know how the insurance works. That's yes. how education works. Uh, you you uh, pay for it, you take it in, then its benefits usually is long term and comes longer and longer. Uh, can you share any success stories or examples of? You know, student athletes who have excelled in both sports and academics in Kenya. Uh, I can take it on. Yeah. Um, I can start with myself. Yeah. Um, I'm a living testimony. 
Yeah, I'm a living testimony of what sports can do to you. Okay, because um, I'll tell you for a fact, when I got into Aquinas, I was expelled from Agorosari. So I'm expelled from Agorosari, I come into Aquinas, my dad tells me, bro, uko peke yako. So mama kupigana, weji sot. Okay, so I had to admit myself in Aquinas, coach T9 had to take me in. Uh, anytime I used to be sent out for school fees, because then he was the, the bus or something. When I come back to class, my, my nini is nil. My school fees is nil. How I did it, I don't know. Me on on scholarship. I did that. Went to NIS. Uh, did my form 5, form 6. Again on a scholarship. And this also says how important education is and also your social life in school. Because when I was finishing NIS, I had a fee of 360 something thousand that had accumulated. So uh, while I was an ass, I was doing psychology, I was doing law, I was doing business, and I was doing IT. Those are my. So when it came to IT, I was fourth in class. When it came to psychology, I was second in class. When it came to law, I was second in class. That is because Mogoko didn't do exam. <laughs> but I would have been third in class. Yeah. When it came to econ, I didn't like econ. So I was like fourth or something. Yeah, and then now, uh, whenever there was drama, there was music, there was what I used to participate in all those. So when it came, I done my exam, I passed. Now I cannot get my certificate in school because of what? Because of the fee balance. I sat down with Miss Lee and I told Miss Lee, whatever you're telling me to pay, I can't pay. But she reflected and looked at everything, because when you look at the cultural dance, when you look at CG dancing, the team. Football, they are lacking one player. When you look at rugby, they are lacking one player. I was that guy, extra player, who was volunteering to do what? To go take part, participate, and we win. Okay, then it came to ZTEC. The same thing. It's a scholarship. I was top in my class. When it came to African Nazarene, I think I was like second best in my graduation year in my class. So, and then after that, now I've gone because of all this knowledge, all this network. Anyone that you interact with, they'll just tell you because of your papers and everything. And that is success, that is success. So it's possible, it can be done, but you just have to be smart how to do it. And at the end of the day, don't let sports use you or basketball use you, use sports to get these opportunities. Okay, don't come to Africa Nazarene, spend five years, six years, yet you're on scholarship, you're wasting yourself. Okay, you're wasting yourself. Use the least amount of time to pursue your career or your degree or your course, then move out. Because there's an opportunity somewhere else for you. So don't let sports use you. Yeah? Don't let coach start looking at your grades. You what, what, what? There are coaches outside here. They want you to fail so that you play for them next year. <laughs> yeah. I've seen it happen. Yeah? They not check your grades. They not do what? Okay. <clears throat> Yeah, so make sure that every success, those are milestones. I remember, this is a personal story. I was the first coach to coach Kaya TV. When I walked into Kaya TV, they didn't have done, they didn't have prep, they didn't have anything. But I had to make basketball players go for prep, go for done. You see? So I changed the whole culture. Now they have prep, they have done, they have everything. You see? And during my time there, my least student, my least student, yeah? You guys know Oyo, yeah? Oyo had a C. That was my least student. Immediately I left Kaya TV, the same, same player, now has E's and D's. You see? Because the next person who came in, they didn't care about the academic and the, all that part, you see? So it's so, so important. Take your time, work on your books. You can succeed, okay? You can succeed. Yeah, so me, I'm, personally, I'm a success story. I've gone through the system that you guys are going through, and I'm coming out. And as I come out, I'm now looking at opportunities. Me, I went into self-employment after being employed. Now I'm into self-employment. Okay, I have my own academy. I run my own things. I do my own things. I build my own networks. Okay, but it's because of the knowledge I have. Sasa? So, so. In what ways? 
the sports programs. I, I wish our sports uh, directors and all who are here because we sent invites. In what ways do sports programs enhance the university experience and promote holistic development among students? Okay, I mean, that's a very interesting question and a good one, I'd say. So, when I was coming in uh, for the Strathmore scholarship, which I believe is the best basketball scholarship in the country as we speak, probably USAU comes in second. I don't know what that are. Varsities are offering in terms of a basketball program, but Strathmore has the best um, scholarship program. Now, in the current state that it is in, it's a shell of what it used to be. And I say this because when the first cohort of the people who are getting into Strathmore, the likes of Ocampo, the likes of Ameso, the program was 100% scholarship. So all you needed to do was present yourself to school, study, and all your tuition fee was catered for. Now, that at some point changed. The university went through the whole program, looked at a certain, uh, certain issues and decided, you know what, when we offer 100% scholarships, then that means you detach the involvement of the parents in the program. So when your folks are detached from it, there's nothing as beautiful as going home and telling your mom that fee for 300,000 per term, because that's the fee per term, say 300,000 shillings per term is taken care of. When your mom or your dad listens to that, they'll be like, okay, here's your pocket money, I'm done with you, I'll see you in four months. So they really don't, <laughs> they really don't care about your input in school and what necessarily happens. And most of the times when you're looking at the Kenyan context, people get into university pretty young because guys begin school a bit early, not at it, as it was back then with our folks. Guys get into university when you're about 19. So you don't know much about life. You want to tell yourself that you know much about life, but you don't. So if you're not as strong as you need to be, you get lost in that campus life. And a lot of things can go wrong in that phase where you're in campus. So they thought to themselves, you know what? Let's now give it on percentage basis. And the percentage basis was also pegged on your high school performance. So if somebody had an A, you qualified for a higher percentage, say, give or take about 90%. That's when the person we keep referring to, Mogoko, that's how Mogoko came into Strathmore and he got the, I think his was about 90% and he was doing law. law yeah. yeah, he was doing law. So his was 90%. So you know your mom just does the calculation, she pays for 10%. Now, this 10%, it's not small money. But since your mom is paying for it, there's now that interest to get involved in that particular sort of uh, program. And I think that's one of the best things Strathmore did, just moving away from that 100% because now in terms of developing yourself holistically, it gives you that perspective that, you know what, life is not as easy as people want to see it. Nobody gives you anything for free because initially it was 100% free, so you were there. So that also helps. Secondly, when you're looking at sports programs in universities, I think they're very important because Sports should be viewed as something that assists you to approach life in a better way. Because, again, as basketball, it's a team sport. So I have to understand what sort of person Zadie is. I have to understand what sort of person KJ is. Is he is he irritable? You know, is he provoked easily? Is is he a team player? So this sports program they contribute a lot in terms of developing players holistically because they just give you that gist of how to go about life. And I think students who view scholarships in that manner get the most out of it because i think most of you just not probably the guys who are seated here but most of the students who go for these scholarship programs their aim is just to play basketball play football that ends at some point and the unfortunate thing is that it ends immediately you toss your cap on your graduation day so you have to learn about life when you're in school as zed did and it's because of that he's now running his own academy He's making basketball work for him. So if you don't learn about life and get that holistic approach when you're undergoing a scholarship program, I think you're doomed. So try not to be part of the people who are doing.